Hi, this is Mr. Evans. This video looks at uh, interest rates in particular. Um, but first of all, this is the first section in the part of Unit 2 that looks at the economic climate. And therefore, I'll start with an introduction of exactly what we mean by the economic climate or the economic environment. So when people are talking about the economy, what they're talking about is the production and consumption behavior of businesses and consumers. Businesses in the economy produce stuff. Consumers in the economy consume stuff. And there's a flow of money from households to businesses. Households give businesses money when they consume goods and services that the businesses have produced. Businesses, of course, also give households money because households sell businesses their labor. What do I mean by that? Well, um, people go out to work. They are effectively selling their time and energy um, during which they produce the products that businesses sell. They're effectively exchanging their time and energy for money. Okay, And people get paid a wage or a salary. So there's a flow of money from businesses to households and the economic climate looks at that flow of money between businesses and households and how it's going and what's affecting it. You need to know about how the interest rate can affect this flow of money between businesses and households, how the level of employment can and how average incomes and consumer spending affects this cycle of money being transferred from households to businesses and back again, because um, that's really what determines in a very simplistic uh, way, the, the size of the economy. So interest rates have an impact on that flow of money between businesses and consumers. How do we define interest rates? Well, interest rates are the cost of borrowing money. So if you borrow money, if you go to the bank and you ask for a loan, the bank will say, sure, OK, we'll lend you £100, but we want that £100 back. But there's also a price for us taking the risk of lending you the money. You need to pay us back £100 plus the interest that we're going to charge you. Maybe that's 5%, in which case um, it will cost you £5 to borrow this £100. So you need to pay us back £100 plus the £5 interest rate and your total debt will therefore be £105. So interest rates are the cost of borrowing money and they are the reward for saving it. Some of you may be familiar if you have savings accounts that when you put your money in the savings account and if you just leave it, the bank will give you money in exchange for you keeping your money in the bank, which sounds like quite a good deal, but it's how banks work. People put their money in the bank. The bank doesn't just keep that money. The bank actually loans that out to other people. So by you saving your money in the bank, it allows the bank to lend money and then they can make a profit. And effectively, they give you a share of that profit. And that is the interest rate. So it's two things. Interest rates are the cost of borrowing money. When you take out a loan, you have to pay more back. And is the reward for saving money. If you keep money in the bank, in a savings account, the bank will give you... Um, a return on that investment because they're not just keeping it for you, they're lending it out and earning profit with that money. So interest rates can go up and down. And actually, the interest rate is used um, by the Bank of England to affect the economy. So interest rates change. An increase in the interest rate makes it more expensive to borrow money. OK, so the cost of borrowing goes up. I gave the example of borrowing £100 at a 5% interest rate, in which case my debt was £105. That's how much I was going to have to pay back. If the interest rate goes from 5 to 10%, the cost of me borrowing money is going to go up. OK, I pay them back the £100 I've borrowed plus £10 interest uh, as the cost of borrowing has got more expensive. So businesses that have overdrafts and variable rate loans will face increased repayments on these debts, which increase their costs and reduces their profits. So when the interest rates go up, businesses that have overdrafts and loans where they've not agreed the repayments in advance, their repayments are going to go up. 
Okay, it says in the specification uh, right here that you need to know how fluctuating interest rates can affect businesses that rely on overdrafts and loans for finance. Well, if the interest rate goes up, those overdrafts and loans become more expensive. Therefore, it becomes more expensive for businesses to borrow and invest, and businesses are going to spend less money. They're, they're less, you know, if a business wants to buy and build a new factory, often it won't have enough money and retain profits, and they might not want to sell shares, so they're left with the option of borrowing money. If interest rates go up, that becomes more expensive, and businesses might not want to borrow money and invest it. You also need to know, it says in the specification, that you need to know that fluctuating interest rates can affect consumer and business spending. So we've talked about business spending. Um, businesses are going to find it more expensive to borrow, and therefore they'll spend less. But consumers are also going to find it harder to borrow money. Okay, The cost of borrowing money, the interest rate has gone up for them. So things that consumers borrow money to buy, things like cars and houses, they're not going to be buying them so much. If if consumers have mortgages where they've borrowed some money to buy a house, which is very common in the UK, these mortgage repayments may increase. Okay, People borrow money on sometimes variable rate mortgages, it's called, and those mortgage payments go up. And therefore, an increase in the cost of borrowing money makes it yeah, more expensive to borrow their disposable income goes down because they've got to pay back their mortgage and there might be a fall in demand for products. Of course, if the interest rate goes up, there's also more of a reward for saving it. So let's just take that example of interest rates increasing from 5 to 10%. If I save £100, so I've got £100 in the bank, a 5% rate of interest, I get £105 back at the end of the year. Great. If the interest rate goes up to 10%, 10 uh, I get £110 at the end of the year. So when interest rates go up, not only do consumers find it more difficult to borrow money, there's also more incentive for them to save their money and not spend it in businesses. So the overall effect tends to be lower revenues because consumers aren't borrowing and they're saving their money instead. And if the business has got debts like overdrafts and loans, those debts are going to become more expensive, lower revenues, higher costs, therefore a rise in the interest rate is not necessarily good news for businesses. Um, interest rates can also uh, fall, excuse me, interest rates can also fall, well how does that affect businesses? Well a fall in the interest rate makes it um, cheaper to borrow money, okay so instead of the interest rate going up, the interest rate comes down, it becomes cheaper to borrow money. So that's good news for these businesses with overdrafts and loans or they've borrowed money. They're going to benefit from lower repayment, which reduces their costs. It becomes less expensive for businesses to borrow and invest money. And therefore, businesses are more likely, if the interest rate goes down, to have lower repayments on their debts. They might be more incentivized to take out loans and invest in those factories that they want to. And therefore, business spending is likely to go up. Consumers are also going to find it easier to borrow money because the interest rate has gone down. At the same time, you know, households with mortgages, great. The interest rate falls. The, 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 the size of their mortgage repayments falls and they have more disposable income. So therefore, consumers might think, great, I've got more money. I can borrow money. My mortgage repayments are lower. So I'm going to go out and spend money in businesses. This is good news for businesses. At the same time, there's also less incentive for consumers to save money. OK, so why are consumers going to save money if there's not very much of a reward for it? Why am I incentivized to put my money in the bank when I could spend it and enjoy it today? Because the interest rate has fallen. I'm not getting such a return on my savings. So what's the overall effect on businesses? We've got higher revenues because consumers are borrowing more money. They have lower mortgage repayments. And they've got less incentive to save. So consumers are out spending lots of money, leading to higher revenues. Businesses that have borrowed money have lower costs. And generally, profits should rise. 
So I'm not sure why we've got that. But here's a, a graph showing you what's happened to interest rates since the global financial crisis. Uh, you can see that interest rates were at 5%. They have fallen now to really historically low levels, and they're currently at 0.75%. Okay, very, very low. If you look at a chart showing you interest rates, uh, they've been around for about 200 years, interest rates. They have never, ever been this low, and this is in response to the global financial crisis. Um, if you want to find out more about this, economics is a really interesting subject. It's not necessarily great news that they've been so low for so long but that's a more advanced conversation so here is a slide just to go over the impact on loans and overdrafts and the impact on business and consumer spending if you want to pause the video and have a look at that um, it might be a good idea just to update your notes